Hey everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So it is currently Tuesday evening, it's coming up on seven o'clock and I've just got home from work but I thought I would start this reading vlog now because I'm planning on doing a lot of reading this evening. I'm currently reading Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson and I'm about 85 pages into this so not too far in but I'm really enjoying it so far which we expected didn't we because last year Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson Anderson was one of my favourite fantasy series of the year so I've been really excited to read more of Brandon Sanderson's books. From what I gather so far the magic system in this is based around colour so everyone in this world has something called breath and I think breath is like a life force and there are people in this world who can collect breath and if they draw on the colours in their surroundings then it gives them magical powers. There's also these two kingdoms called Idris and Halandrun if I'm pronouncing in that right and there's this tension between these two kingdoms and it feels like they might be on the brink of war however there was this treaty that was made many many years ago where the king of Idris promised that he would send his daughter to be married to the god king of Halandron however now that it's actually come down to it the king of Idris doesn't want to send his oldest daughter Vivienna to be married because he thinks that he'd be sending her to her death so instead he decides to send his youngest daughter Ciri which is kind of mean if you think about it because he still thinks that he's sending Ciri to her death. It's just that Vivienna is the favourite daughter. What's really interesting is that the royal family of Idris have magic hair. So basically their hair changes colour based on their emotions. And Vivienna has been able to learn how to control this power. Whereas Ciri has a lot more trouble doing that because she's a lot more volatile. Whereas Vivienna is very poised and very calm and collected so the two sisters are very very different yeah everything's intriguing me so far I think the magic system in this is really interesting the world is really interesting because there's a lot of political intrigue and I love political fantasies so I'm hoping that this gets even more political and that we continue to learn about the magic system and I like the characters so far as well there's a few different perspectives that we're following so we're following Siri I guess she's the main perspective but there's also this rebel whose name I can't remember then there's also one of the gods that we're following because there's a few different gods in this world and I feel like I still have quite a lot to learn there's been a little bit of world building so far but Brandon Sanderson feeds you enough so that you can follow what's happening but it's not info dumpy which I do really appreciate I realized that I've been pronouncing the older sister's name wrong her name is actually Vivian Vivienna, not Vivienna and not Vivian, which is how I keep pronouncing it in my mind. But for some reason, I always struggle to pronounce names in fantasy books. I also forgot to mention that this is going to be a spoiler free vlog. So don't worry if you haven't read Warbreaker yet. Because this is a standalone, I didn't want to do spoilers because if I like this book, then I'm probably going to want to convince people to read it. But I like that this is a standalone because it's less commitment. And we all know that I'm in the middle of too many series <laughs> right now. I've only read another 50 pages this evening but the plot is progressing I think I have got hold on what the plot is going to be in this book so we're following Siri as she's learning about life in this god court and it's been implied that there's some sort of mystery I think there's something else going on with this god court which I'm excited to find out about because I love a good mystery we're also following Vivenna as we've established is her name and she is on this mission to try and rescue her sister and I think through her perspective we're going to learn more about the rebels in this city. The setting is really interesting because most of the story is taking place in this god city that feels very modern but the way that the sisters are reacting to this city I get the impression that the rest of the world isn't that way. I don't think I'm going to read any more tonight because it's getting quite late and I'm tired <laughs> and I'm in the office again tomorrow for work and then I'm going out for food after work with some friends so don't think I'm going to read much tomorrow unless I read some 
once I'm back. And then on Friday, I'm going out for drinks after work. So the only real day that I have to read this week is Thursday and then obviously the weekend, but I'm not doing anything at the weekend. So should hopefully still be able to get some of this read. <laughs> You come from the east coast, I heard that it's cold there Yeah, I know a place in Los Angeles, girl, we should go there Sitting on the pier, drink a couple beers, yeah, swear I never thought like this Yeah, let me be your Mick Jagger, your Hollywood A-list do you ever have one of those days where everything is just going wrong and if you don't laugh then you'll cry? I feel like that's what yesterday was for me. So I'm in a bad mood today. I'm also tired because I went out with work after work last night. So we went for drinks in Birmingham and I didn't get home until five o'clock this morning because I'm an idiot and I could have got the last train home but I decided not to because I was having too much of a good time. But but I'm not having a good time today. It has taken me until one o'clock to get myself up, have a bath, and just get myself sorted <laughs> for the day. I've put on fresh bed sheets as well, which I'm just so excited for because my plan for today is to order food and I'm trying to decide between McDonald's or pizza. I think I'm leaning towards McDonald's because they have the new vegan burger, the McPlant, and I had one the other week and it is really nice. I mean, it's been a long time since I've had a McDonald's burger, like a meat burger, I mean. So I don't really have much of a memory of what the Big Mac is like, the meat Big Mac, but the McPlant is really nice. So I'm gonna do that now. And then I'm gonna read some more of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I am really enjoying this and I'm really annoyed at myself that it's taken me all week just to get to page 145. So I'm gonna settle down with my food and read because I'm really enjoying this. I really like the world and I really like the characters and I just want to get back into it. I want to get stuck into it and try and get to the halfway point. So wish me luck. <laughs> So I didn't read as much as I wanted to today. I made it past the 200 page mark though. So I'm now on page 222 and I'm still really enjoying this. So I think that's why I don't want to read it when I'm in this mood and when I'm tired because it's going to affect my enjoyment obviously. And I think this book has five star potential. So I want to read it when I can fully appreciate everything because the world in this is so, so interesting. There are these gods that are also called the returned and this is actually mentioned on the back of the book so it's not a spoiler or anything but yeah there are these gods that used to be people that were alive however they then died and came back but they can't remember anything to do with their previous lives and I think that's gonna somehow play into the plot. I don't know. This is literally just a random prediction because I know how much Brandon Sanderson loves a good plot twist. So that is, yeah, where I'm at so far. I really like the way that things are gradually unfolding and I'm excited to carry on reading this tomorrow when I'm hopefully more awake. I think I've reached a point now with this book where I just need to stop procrastinating, get my head down and actually read a chunk <laughs> because there's not much more I can really say on the plot from this point forward because obviously I don't want to go into spoilers. I will say that I was nervous at first about Ciri's storyline just because of the reasons why she's sent to Halandron. I was worried that I wouldn't like the direction that her storyline goes in. However, it seems to be going in a different direction to what I expected. And so I'm feeling less nervous about that now. I like that this book is surprising me. I will also say that I hope there isn't any romance in this book. And that might sound like a strange thing to say because generally I do like romance in fantasy books. However, I've learned from past experience that I don't really like the way that Brandon Sanderson writes romance. And I only have Miss Bourne to go off on this. I mentioned this 
in a vlog actually, but I didn't like the main romance in the Mistborn trilogy. And I don't know whether that's an unpopular opinion because when I said that in a vlog, a few people agreed with me and a few people disagreed with me, which is obviously fine. Like we all have different opinions, but yeah, I think that the way that Brandon Sanderson writes romance just doesn't really work for me. And because this is a standalone, I don't think that there's enough time for a romance to be developed in a way that I will like. So I don't know whether this is just me or whether it's the book's fault, but I really struggled through the middle section of this. And I don't know whether it was just because I was really tired yesterday and I was struggling to focus, but it started to feel really repetitive. And I found myself feeling quite bored, which is obviously not great. I mean, I'm not hating the book. I'm still really enjoying it. I think that it's just taken it down from a five star prediction to a four stars. My dad is actually listening to the audiobook for this at the moment. So we're doing a bit of an impromptu buddy read, which is fun because he read Mistborn last year around the same time that I did, but then he read the second two books, so Well of Ascension and Hero of Ages before I did. And he accidentally told me stuff that I would consider a spoiler. He didn't obviously consider it a spoiler, but he implied stuff that meant that I worked other stuff out and it was just a bit of a mess and I was really annoyed at him. So I'm glad that I'm reading this at the same time as him so we can talk about it, but I'm reading it before him so he can't accidentally give me spoilers. <laughs> Don't know if I've actually mentioned yet in the vlog, but I'm also reading this for the Cosmere Unbounded read along. And Joanna has asked me if I wanna be on the live show for Warbreaker. So if I know the date for the live show, I'll leave that on the screen or in the description because I don't think we've actually confirmed yet when the live show is actually gonna be, but I think it will be sometime in February. So it is now Wednesday and I am determined to finish Warbreaker this evening because I feel like I've been reading this book for a really long time and I want this vlog to go live tomorrow if I can get it edited in time. So my plan for this evening is I'm gonna watch sprints. I think Ashley is doing sprints tonight actually. I've got about 150 pages left so hopefully it won't take me more than a few hours. I do feel like the pace in this has started to pick up a lot. It got a little bit slow in the middle but then there was this twist which I don't know if I would call it a twist but one of the characters storylines started to veer off in a completely different direction to what I was expecting and I appreciated it. I think the thing is the characters that it involved weren't my favourite characters and so it initially fell a little bit flat but the more that I kept on reading it the more that I did like it. It's really hard to talk about books when you're not sharing spoilers. I think what I'm trying to say is that it didn't impact me as much as I would have liked because it always happens when you're reading a book that's got multiple perspectives. There are some characters in this that I care about more than others. I do think that Brandon Sanderson's strengths are definitely with his world building and his magic systems. So his magic systems always feel really logical and the concepts are quite simple but every everything makes sense and it feels really satisfying to read about. I also really like the way that Brandon Sanderson writes about faith and religion and in this book in particular there's a lot of really interesting conversations that are happening because most of this book does take place in this god city and generally it feels like it's been really well thought out. I'm not hating the romance as much as I thought I would but I'm also not loving it. I think that at first I felt like it came out of nowhere and then there were a few moments where I thought okay right I, I can see this now but I still don't feel huge amounts of chemistry between the characters. If there was no romance in this then I don't think it would make any difference to my overall enjoyment and yeah it's going to be interesting to see how this book ends but I am gonna stop rambling, sit down, which I'm already doing, <laughs> and finish this book. <laughs> Okay, so I did end up finishing Warbreaker this morning. I stayed up until about 12 o'clock last night trying to finish it and I had about 30 pages left, but I was so tired and I was falling asleep. So I decided to finish it this morning before I started work. And oh, I don't know how to feel about the ending for this. There was a lot that was revealed towards the end that I 
think I understood, but also I don't think I really understood everything. You know like how sometimes you'll get to the end of a book and everything will click into place? I never really got that with this. I did think it was clever the way that everything came together in the end. I rhymed there. <laughs> I did think it was a clever ending, but I think I would really benefit from going back and rereading this at some point because I think that then I would know what to look out for, whereas there were certain things that just went straight over my head. Yeah, it's a really difficult one because there were some very epic moments towards the end that I did like. I just wanted to love this more than I did. I'm still going to give it four stars. It's just not my favourite book by Brandon Sanderson that I've read so far. That does mean that I am going to end the reading vlog here though, so thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, let me know in the comments if you've read Warbreaker and what you thought of it. And yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye!